Hi, Mary. Hey, Miss Stacy. How um, are you? So, you know, you are so eloquent about the horrible, horrible brutality of writing memoir, about bleeding onto the page. The, no one is better on this subject. So, what was it like to write about writing a memoir? It was so much easier than actually writing one, can I tell you? It's so much easier. What? Well, I've been teaching memoir for 30 years. I, when I was 10 years old, I wrote, when I grow up, I will write one half poetry and one half autobiography. I mean, who is? How did you, you had such incredibly pre, incredible appreciation. It's amazing. I, I know. The other thing I said was, I'm not very successful as a little girl. Same journal entry. When I grow up, I will probably be a mess. I was Christian. Did you feel that you had to live up to these ide early I, ideas? I guess. Clearly? I mean, it was 1965. Okay, so was it a joy to write this? Did you feel like this is a lifetime of wisdom, this gorgeous book? It's a lifetime of, what people don't know about me as a reader is I am like the world's biggest fan. Nobody loves the books she loves more than I love the books I love. I, I know, mean, we could fight over Hilary Mantel personally, but that's okay. Do you think you love her, Hillary Mantel I might, more than I I might do? love her more than you, I but let's talk about so. your book. Let's talk about your let's book. Let's talk okay. about my book. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about okay. me and my personal so, needs. Years, the years of writing. But I'm in the middle of reading your book, so I have to mention that. That's the very kind of you. Not the least bit kind. It happens to be a fact. Um, years of, re of talking about memoir, so you decide I'm going to put this on the page. No, I didn't decide I'm going to put this on the page. I got a phone call from my agent who I said... I hate when that happens. Who said... <laughs> You'll never believe how much money they're going to give us for you to write a book about memoir. And I said, don't want to do it, not doing it, finishing a book of poems, writing a television show, don't want to do it. She gave me a number. I said, great, when do I start? And that's when you formed the war room? Because you're very funny about the war room from which you have to work to put this thing together. Exactly. Yes. I, I put up like, you know, bulletin boards and grease boards and I have index cards and sticky notes on, on all the windows and I look like a serial killer task force. I mean, I'm really well, just there are some dead bodies in the book, so it makes sense, There right? are some bodies in the book. Okay, so in other me in memoirs, you have often undone what you did in the previous book. Really? Yeah, I mean, you've said this yourself, that you've, that it's revi that you've revised history as it had happened in an earlier memoir, an earlier one of your books. Did this bring you to some sort of new ground that you hadn't yet explored? Uh, did it bring me to a new ground? Well, I think it gave me more conviction that the, that the greatest memoirists really are great because of their of voice. They have very distinctive voices. And it's not the external whammies that make your life great, it's the interior universe of the writer and how the sort of psychology changes over the course of the book. So, you know, Hilary Mantel isn't, you know, in speeding car chases throughout her entire uh, Only giving up so. the ghost. Right. But internally, she's got very dramatic stuff going on. Right, I mean, that's a book where, the, where obviously the sensibility changes, or the character changes enormously from beginning to end. Right. But interestingly so is this, although it's a collection of, 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 you know, of short pieces. We, we travel quite a journey, take, we take a journey with you I through the so. book. I mean, I, I wanted people who not necessarily wanted to write memoirs, but wanted to live and examine life. And whether you want to write a memoir or not, you still are arguing with the people you have, have to have Thanksgiving with every year about what did or did not happen. Well, since you want us all to write our memoirs, how do we all get, what do you call it, the, the clamp in your brain to unclamp? What does you call it? The, the, the claws clamp, in your brain. If the clamp in your brain is clamped, don't yeah. unclamp it. I mean, let me just say, if you can't remember anything about your life, Godspeed. You don't need just to embrace the amnesia. just embrace the amnesia. Uh -huh. Those of us, most of the people I know, I've known some great memoirs, Maxine Hong Kingston, Jeffrey and Tobias Wolf, uh, Maya Angelou, Frank Conroy. Um, if you can't remember stuff, there's a reason for that. And if you can, most of the people I've ever talked to were kind of haunted into their memoirs. They were kind of they had flamethrowers on their asses. Right, and they had to somehow exercise the flamethrowing, right. basically, onto right. the page. They had to find some deeper truth. Do you go the other way, too? Are there things you've intentionally left out? Because I never talk about anybody's penis. <laughs> is that, if is somebody that, is nice <laughs> enough to show me his you penis... You must have a lot of dates. Well, I keep it to myself. I always consider that a kind of is privilege. Is that the only unbreakable rule in terms of things you've kept off What's the page? The one thing I've been hard and fast <laughs> about, so to speak. <laughs> Let's, move, let's go along. Both hard and fast right. about. Right.
but so otherwise yes. there's nothing where you would say this is an inv this is something that is so disturbing I can't even go there. Your point is that's where we're going. Nothing in my life is as disturbing as what happened to me before I was 10 years old. To be honest with you, you know, I'm I'm a old maid school teacher, college professor who lives a very sort of tidy life. I mean, nothing I mean, having you want a, me to believe that? Well, having my mother try to kill me with a butcher knife, you know, but Happens even becoming everybody. a Catholic, I mean, who, who has to do that? I don't know. Most people, I think, when reading Lit, wanted to, to convert to Catholicism because it was such a compelling. Really? I thought, I, I mean, I found it had, don't you, didn't you hear this from other people, that it has that spellbinding effect of here is how I'm going to order and reorganize my life. I, it's such I, a book about redemption. I had a better chance of becoming a pole dancer than a Catholic. Um, we have a few more minutes. Is there anything that you drew from this book that surprised you? I guess just that the, the national conversation about memoir is massive and it's always been a marginalized genre and you know what? It has a lot of readers now just as the novel did when it was still marginalized. And it's all thanks to you and to I don't Wires know. Club. You can't blame me. I don't blame you. I give you immense credit for it. Well, thank you. It's a you. fabulous, fabulous thank book of essays. Thank you so much, Miss Stacy. The book of essay in itself makes my day. So. Thank you. Anyway, thanks.